plus, just to, to see how it's so different. Okay. But each, I think there are works of art that stand out and become separated from the artist, like, uh, like the great glass of Duchamp is a work of art that stands on its own. Yeah. You don't even need to know Duchamp made it. That's a question that brings that, is that that piece took him, he said he spent 20 years or so on that. And uh, there's that recent interview that was like republished by Calvin Tompkins with him. Calvin yeah. Tompkins oh, yeah. was like young at the time, and he interviewed him in the 60s, so it was uh, close to the end of his life. And what was interesting about that interview. You mean the great Glass or the Tondonet? talks about the Tondonet. He talks great a lot of the art pieces. God, the, the Glass piece was made in the, um, in between. I mean, during the First World War, and it shattered. Yes, and he made a few of them. He said that the, the reason why I brought it up, or, or where I commented off that, was to say that in the, inter in the interviews, there's something surprising, which is that he felt that art in the 20th century, the problem with it, had to do with this anxiety brought on by um, the uh, Industrial Revolution, this idea that everything had to be made fast. And the surprising thing that he said, I think he would say, if he knew what had been already made, because he thought that real art takes time, and that it just it just takes time. And always, kind of, and, and that glass piece is one of the pieces he cited as something that he was really proud of. And a lot of that had to do with he felt that that was like sort of this this interest of taking cubism and putting the concept of time in it. But um, and that that took him years and years to come to. Mm -hmm. So he was more proud of them than the uh, than the ready made and. To ask it, to throw that back at you guys, it would be like how much is uh, is something that uh, time is, in, or can you talk about your sense of time and in your own art making, and maybe it is something you were, all you were talking about. Like I know I know you were a little bit in a way that uh, it does take a long time for you to progress with the work, and I didn't catch your name because Lynn, Lynn, Lynn. Love. But, nice, nice to meet you. Yeah. Like that. Uh, uh, you also said that it took sometimes at least two or three months to have something come out. You know, to, to mm -hmm. So maybe uh, you guys want to talk about that. I'd be curious about your, your relationship with time and your kind of an open question. I would say that a, a, a chunk of what I wrote today, not thinking that we would just converse, is, is that this work, which, which takes, as I said, 30 years of personal photographs from my relationship with my partner, and posits it, posit, it positions it into uh, marketing photographs of museums, auction houses, and galleries. I could easily say this, that, that this work took 50 years. Mm -hmm. This work is the result of, of trauma in my childhood, which made the observation of my life an, a ubiquitous, self-scrutinizing life, my entire life. And at this point, I'm happy enough with my life. I revel in the fact that I've had a love for 32 years. Uh, that it is a secure, healthy relationship that moves forward. At this point, at 59 years old, well, I started this body work four years ago. Um, I reached a point where I was strong enough internally to present it. And there's a lot of finessing. I mean, this is, this is a rather poor example of it. It's a very contemporary, humorous, uh, comment on the selfies we are all, you know, neck deep in, uh, perpetually now. But, uh, I brought other works, but I don't need to show you, but it, it has taken my entire life to have the psychological disposition and intelligence to say, this is me, this is my life, this is how I love, this is how I present it to you, this is how I think you will look at it, or may look at it, or should look at it. That's a hell of a lot of time. Mm -hmm. The works themselves, maybe I replace images half a dozen times, a dozen times. Maybe I take, you know, something that's not is 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 weighted as Sotheby's, just a gallery with an observer, and take half a dozen, a dozen, or three dozen photographs from our lives, and say, what does this say with a single female spectator, spectator that's really in the shadow, or a man who's looking at directly at it, or the or the the subject of one of us or both of us are looking directly at the actual viewer while an observer is giving it a secondary uh, influence of it. All these things took a, a lot of time to... The tools are all intellectual. 
Lynn and Paul, do you think <clears throat> that all of the years, all of your work, all of your experience comes to fruition in whatever you're doing today or tomorrow or last week? I think inevitably it must, right? I mean, there, you must draw on Lynn all your time in Italy has an influence and... Yeah, yeah, I, 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 it's just like what he said, you, you've been, you've been working on, on, this may be just one photograph, but you've been working on your art all along, and so that accumulation spills out, mm -hmm. it just is in the work. I, 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 <clears throat> It's very hard to generalize that. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter um, how long it takes you to do the work. Yeah. You can do it in five seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, a, it's an accumulation of, of uh, experience as you described it, mm -hmm. uh, I guess, and, and, and the emotion putting into your life. Mm -hmm. And it's a reflection of what, where you are, basically, if you're honest about it. I guess. Mm -hmm. So uh, this process uh, is the same for every people, I guess, right? I mean, not too different, the, the, the form is different, the reason are different, but the, the process is about the same. I think my response was a little defensive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do think that I'm making you know, photographs which have this... I think there are all different things. forms of time. Mm. In, in, um, in art. Mm. There's the historical time, there's your own time, which is the time you spend making art, and there's the time of the piece. That mm. one is how it's being taken to make. And then there's a time that it passes away. Like I have a painting in my in my in my loft that I did in nine, uh, 1997, and it's still giving me a lot of time. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking at it. I come back to it all the time. It's like, and it took. I know it took me a long time to make. Well, it didn't take me such a long time because then I was painting perhaps faster. Mm -hmm. Or was I? I don't remember. Mm -hmm. But. The time I spend looking at it is much longer than the time I've spent painting it. Mm. <clears throat> and every day the sunlight hits it, and that time of the sun going down on it, it gives another time on it. Mm. And I think um, I, there's something a little bit off, but I've always been fascinated that the time of art is very strange. Like if you think of the God de Chauvet and the God de Lasco and now, the God Rasco is in the middle of now and the God Shove. We have 15,000 years between us and Rasco, and it's 15,000 years between Rasco and Shove. That so time is very interesting. Um, we've, we 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 are obsessed with our own time. I I I'm obsessed with time in in like when I go and see. Uh, a Titian or Rembrandt or Picasso or a um, medieval walkabout or uh, uh, a Roman church, yeah. I think, how can I be as good? Yeah. That's, and yeah. I'm, I'm not thinking about today necessarily. Mm -hmm. I, it's about that's a big ego. I, 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 want, I just want the work to be able to stand up in time. Mm. But maybe that's a ridiculous idea, because our time is getting shorter and shorter, perhaps. Oh, could common. you always think that way, even as a younger artist? <coughs> because I'm thinking that, you know, young students aren't thinking about time that way, necessarily, and they're more immediate, and they want maybe results, mm. or they're sort of thinking about things. And mm. I was just thinking with some of the work I did a long time ago, I you know, destroyed it, some of it, thinking it was terrible, and then saw photographs of it. I was like, that actually was interesting. Why did I just destroy it? <laughs> you know, I wasn't yeah. ready for it, and I didn't have the, you know, the, the perception of time to keep something. And Maybe it was ahead of myself, you know, maybe I couldn't really see it yet. And so what you're saying is so true and important, and I think a lot of young artists don't. When you're young, I think it's hard to see that. Well, when I was young, 
But I, I come from a different kind of back. I, I, a lot of people don't come from my background. I'm not. I'm not proud of my. I'm not, I'm not. Not proud of my background. I'm just born as I am. Okay. And I. I. I, I come from a middle. A middle class family with an artist mother. Okay. So I was born in painting. I is. I. I can't. I can't write about it. That's how it was. I watched her paint me. I watched her paint. She put a mirror behind herself. So I could watch her painting the painting of me. And she would take me to museums all the time. And I would be seeing paintings all the time. Mm, yeah. So for me it was part of my part of my own DNA. And she would talk about the Egyptians as if they were still living. I mean the Egyptians as if they're still living. It's like we would talk about ancient Egypt. It was like no, I think about it. Not many people have that experience. Is, is it good or not good? Is that is not the question. Because a lot of people make uh, 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 people, you don't need to have an upbringing to make art. And people who have an upbringing don't necessarily make art. Um, but it was an only, it's, well, just to make the story short, I stuttered, so the only language I believe was universal was painting and visual art because when we went to, we moved around Europe a lot. And when I went, my father was Czech. So we went to Prague, Vienna, Germany, I mean Austria, and we saw paintings, and I couldn't speak German, I couldn't speak Czech, I couldn't speak French, uh, Greek, but I, I could hardly speak English. But you could paint. But I could see things that could talk to me without being, honest, without being able to talk to anyone. Mm -hmm. So I knew painting could talk to everyone. Mm -hmm. all, across the, across, the world, a Chinese person could come and see, come to my studio, we didn't have to say anything. Mm -hmm. He could see my paintings, we could have a conversation. And that's where time for me kicks in, is that art, doesn't have, art of yesterday and today is the same time. Mm -hmm. Art doesn't grow older. It may die, it's not very good. But good art doesn't grow old. There was the uh, Dito Hort anecdote, so he was uh, in Rajavik at the time, he was living uh, in a nice house, big house, but not so nice. But it was a century, right, when he opened the windows, because of, wow, I'm living just in front of said time, he said. So it is, that's pushing me to work a little bit when I look at it. That's the point of To realize something with my life, so it's like, a, you know, that's what it's like. But, but I mean, um, so, Yes, the time, I do bring things I made before back into my work today and I do think about paintings I made 20 years ago and I see what was it, what happened then, and should I reinvestigate certain forms that I already used mm -hmm. and, uh, and so forth. So, but I believe painting is circular, not yeah. linear. And that idea, like the circle, uh, that the idea of the circle, as opposed to a line, time kind of thing, like uh, the other thing, you're, the universal idea, you're talking about like warp in Egypt still speaking to one as if it was in the present, and that, that's the other underlying current. I'm just like bringing these up, not as a personal statement, just sort of things that tease out concepts that I have to talk about. It's just like the idea of uh, a term in art, uh, which goes along with this universal sense. And like, uh, you know, when people think of the word formalism, there's a lot of the, oh, Clement Greenberg, this is what the first thought is, and it's kind of like someone telling me what to think and suppressing certain kind of art forms for what seemed like arbitrary reasons and you know, whatever. But like maybe before that, the earlier kind of early 20th century idea of formalism, I don't remember his name right now, part of the Bloom, the Virginia Woolf's friend, who made that book called Art, which is like Mona Israel Bible. Um, he says, uh, I don't remember his name right now, but he said that you only know art through feeling, and that's how he felt that this universe is approach. Uh, and I wonder what... what, what You're not talking about Berenson. No, I don't know Berenson. But, but the, the question Clive would be... Bell. Clive Bell, yes. Okay. So he said that, he said that I would Bell. know, so that you only really know when art is it's through its feeling, its emotion. And he, actually, he would say that those two words are slightly separate, not like personal emotion, but like a, a feeling one gets from the art, which has this universal character to it. Um, and I'm just curious, like, do you, do you guys approach uh, 
Uh, that's sort of maybe sometimes why artists are, you get frustrated when art historians or critics or people sort of looking at wall text or talk about the work as if, if, as if the work is like an abstract concept, an abstract idea that can be read in a book, right? As opposed to something that's not really words and sort of, as you were talking about, it, it approaches you through the body and it's just sort of you open yourself up to it and it communicates in some way. And I think that's sort of the emotion he was talking about. What do you guys think about that? Do you think that it is really about, like, a, to you, what's important with the art? Does it communicate what's the, the, at the marrow, the core? Is it about the emotional feeling that then elicits some, uh, some sort of content to you? Or is it something that's more conceptual, more abstract thinking? Or what, what is it? That, that's, that's really a, it's a difficult question because mm -hmm. I'm looking at the art in the room, yeah. um, I, I can sense the completeness in something that gives me, you know, it communicates to me yeah. something by all of its, all of its parts. The Judith Murray right there is coming together, it's the, right? How that is Judith Murray. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. 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 yeah, it, 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 it's, it's like, for me it's like a sculptural object because it's forming itself in the air as it, as it elevates, as it moves up on the vertical. And that, that sense of completion that I see happening in time of looking on it and of putting it together from the eyes of someone who's looking, is very, very, uh, it's only visual, and it's, and it's only something that you sense uh, intellectually and, and in your soul. Mm -hmm. so it, it comes together like that. Mm -hmm. that. That makes me think of what Paul said a few minutes ago about mm -hmm. visitors to his studio and watching how they physically react right. to what they're yeah. seeing yeah. and that the body language can, can tell him something about his own painting that he might not have seen before, if I'm getting it right. <clears throat> and your comment about wall layers, uh, Barbara Solomon said earlier, what about curators? And I think what's interesting about wall labels is that sometimes curators go way overboard, um, particularly in the case of, of the wall text about Rembrandt. I mean, I've known curators who've talked about artists who are no longer with us, as if the curator knew that person. Not only knew that person, but knew what that person was thinking when they painted or sculpted knew why they did it, I would, you know, just completely mind-boggling kind of situation to be in. And I was on a panel once and a, a young woman who was only born toward the end of this particular artist's life was speaking as if she had had a kind of transcendental communication with this artist who had told her everything about his work and his life, uh, it was extraordinary. So, I think, yeah. you know, he, it, there, there are all these kind of funny things that happen with how people respond to art, either as professionals or just as someone who looks. I mean, you grew up with art around you, and that influenced you a great deal. Um, Lynn has a father who was a great artist, and in fact, both my mother, yeah. who my mother and father met at the Art Institute in Chicago, and so that mm. was the beginning, maybe the end of what she really was actively producing, because she had six children. But uh, that influence of her, my, our, our mother and our father, it gets into your genes. You begin to understand that life isn't just useless. <laughs> just can't. It has to be. It has to be. Uh, uh, there's work to show for 